Hi guys, in this lecture video, I'll be going over another addition reaction of alkene. And here in this case right here, we will be discussing the halohydrin formation, or um, in which step the two groups of that are being added across the carbon-carbon double bond. One of it is then a halogen, and the other group is an OH group. So these are the two groups that are being added across the carbon-carbon double bond. And again, overall, we refer to this as the halohydrin formation. And so these types of reactions right here are normally achieved whenever we do halog halogenation reaction in the presence of a polar nucleophilic solvent. So it simply is uh, another version of the halogenation reaction in which the solvent is no longer coral coral form but now it is being substituted by another polar nucleophilic solvent. And in the course of this reaction right here, then a chlorine or another type of halogen is being added in one side, and the OH group, or depending on what your, your solvent would be, that is serving as the nucleophile, then that nucleophile or whatever it would be, that is the other group that being added across uh, on the other carbon. And again, here in this case right here, we see a anti-addition of this two group right here. Because the two groups are being added on the different sides of the double bond. And we'll be all, also be producing the other enantiomer, where now this chlorine will be pointed down and the OH group will be pointed up. And again, they will be an enantiomer of each other. And the mechanism of this reaction right here is very much similar to the halogenation reaction mechanism that we have seen already. So first, the alkene interact with the halogen to first produce this bromonium ion. Or if we were to have the chlorine, then it would be all the name, the chl chlorinium ions. And once we have this already, then because we are having water in this uh, reaction, so in this case, water is the solvent, and it also serving as the nucleophile. So that would then come in and attack this carbon right here. One of this carbon to bring up, break up this three member ring right here. And then followed by the last proton transfer step. So here in this case right here, the bromine is e added to one side and the OH group is e added to the other side. Now, if we were to have a different types of solvent, for example, an alcohol, then now our alcohol will be serving as the nucleophile. And now we will be having the OR group that being added right here. And again, we'll be producing the author and enteroma. So uh, stereochemistry wise, then for a simple alkene, then there's no selectivity and we'll be end up with a racemic mixture. But if we were to have a complex alkene, where we have an alkene that is chiral because it have some other types of uh, uh, chiral center on, on it, then we'll be able to favor one of the enteroma over the other depending on what is the structure of our started alkene. And in this types of reaction right here, there's actually regiochemical control in the formation of a hydrant, in which we observe the following. The OH group are actually being added to the more substituted carbon on this alkenes right here. Okay, so that is the regiochemical outcome. And the explanation for this is as follows. So initially, first let's say here that we have this alkene, and again, first the formation of the bromonium ion, and then followed by the nucleophilic attack. So here in this case right here, again, we have seen this before already. Whenever we have a three membrane, and now there is a part of char on this three membrane, then that tells us that this ring right here is really unstable, and it's ready to be broken. So here in this case, the as this ring right here is breaking, then it be accept an electron from the more substituted carbon to break up this ring. And therefore, that makes the more substituted carbon become more electrophilic because a partial part of char would be greater compared to the other carbon. So therefore, as the nucleophile come into attack, it be attacking the more substituted carbon and end up on the opposite side, uh, opposite to where this bromine would be. And that's why we have this product right here. And again, this explains the regiochemistry control that we have seen in this hydrin, uh, halohydrin formation right here. 
And so all the product can also be mixed by choosing what our reagent would be. But we want to, we can substitute water with another polar nucleophilic solvent, such as the alcohol or some other functional group. Okay. So now let's try some of this practice problem right here. Predict the major products uh, in all of this reaction right here when we react this with bromine in the presence of water. And so here in this case right here, uh, so we will then see that the uh, two group, a halogen and an OH group will be added to this double bond right here. And here in this case right here, the ge geochemical uh, control is that the OH group will be added to the more substituted carbon. And the bromine will be added to the less substituted carbon. So here in this case, we'll be having the following product. And now let's say here the uh, water is being added here. And if water, if the OH group is pointed up, then that means this bromine right here will then be pointing down. So that will be the stereochemical outcome of this reaction. And the regiochemical control again. Again, the OH group is added to the more substituted carbon. And will be producing the author and enterma where this bromine is pointing up and this OH group is pointing down. So quite easy to predict the product of these types of reaction. And now let's go over an example where we would have a complex alkene. So here in this case, let's try D. So now D, we have this alkene right here, which is a chiral starting material, right? So in this case right here, when this uh, come into interact with our bromine, then we can see that we'll be forming the bromonium ion in which the bromine will be pointing up, right? Because the isopropyl group right now, this is a bulky group. So in right now, it's pointing down. So as the bromine coming to interact with alkene, it will be attacked, it will be coming from the top side. So now we will be producing the, uh, uh, the bromonium ion in which the bromine will be pointing up. And once we have this already, then the next step is then followed by the nucleophilic attack by water. So here in this case right here, water can either come in and attack this carbon and this carbon. Both of this carbon are equally substituted. But here and so therefore that do not provide us with much selectivity at all. But here in this case right here, when water come into attack, it has to attack from the back side. And right now the back side of this carbon right here, it is more bulky compared to the other carbon. So therefore we see that water will then come in and attack from this back side right here and break up this ring. So therefore the product that we'll be getting here in this case right here will then be as follow. So water, and of course I'm not showing the uh, the last proton transfer here in this case, but water here will be added in the back and our bromine will be pointed up. And that will be the product of this reaction right here. And this will be a major product. We will not be producing a, an equal amount of the author and enteroma, okay, here in this case. And now let's try another example here. So let's say what happened in, instead of having water, if we were to now have an alcohol or an amine as our polar nucleophilic solvent, what will happen? Then the answer, this will be the group that will be added to the more substituted carbon uh, instead of the hydroxy group if we were to have water. So therefore, the product of this reaction would then be as follow. So this carbon right here is more substituted. So therefore, that is where our O, our alcohol will be added to. And the bromine will then be added to the other carbon. And now let's talk about the, chem the chemical control. So if this water, if this OH group right here would to be pointing, uh, would be uh, wedge, then the other bromine here would then be dash. So that's what we have. And I'm going to move this at the group over here so that they not interfere with this bromine. And we need to dash one of this bond. So that will be one of the products that will be produced and will be forming, in this case, the author and enteroma. And again, we'll be producing an equal mixture of the author and enteroma because this alkene right here is a chiral. So there's not much that selectivity where the bromine come in to interact with the alkene. And similarly, if we were to have this, then again, instead of this um, epoxy group that being added right here, we would then have the amine group that being added to it. 